Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. When you come before God, don't turn that into a theatrical production hoping for stardom. Do you think God sits in a box seat? Find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and honestly as you can manage. The world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are full of formulas and programs and advice, peddling techniques for getting what you want from God. This is your father you're dealing with and he knows better than you what you need. Have the glory forever and ever. Amen. Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong today. Over the last few weeks we've been talking about prayer and uh, slowly developing our understanding on uh, prayer and how to develop uh, a life of prayer and make this journey uh, to higher levels in prayer. And as we continue our study, we want to talk about a pattern for personal prayer. And uh, of course, we would go to what is commonly called the Lord's Prayer. And uh, we would try to derive a pattern uh, that we could use. Uh, let's read the Lord's Prayer first together, even though uh, it is something that is very familiar to many of us. Let's just read the Lord's Prayer from Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 13. Jesus said, In this manner, therefore pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now Jesus said, in this manner, therefore pray. Uh, he didn't necessarily tell us it, with these words, pray. But he said, in this manner, implying a pattern that we follow rather than words that we uh, just recite. Now, of course, there's nothing wrong in reciting or stating the words of the Lord's Prayer. It's always very powerful, very meaningful. Uh, so there's nothing wrong in doing that, uh, as long as we understand the meaning of those words and are uh, uh, you know, connected to the meaning of, of that prayer. So there's nothing wrong in it, but I think the, the primary uh, emphasis of Jesus was to follow a pattern. He said, in this manner you pray. So pray like this. And so we want to try to understand a pattern uh, that we could use for our personal prayer. So let's say you have some time to pray. Maybe you've set aside 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, or sometimes even longer. Whatever time you've chosen to pray, how would you spend that time in prayer? Uh, what kind of things would you pray about? So what we could do is simply use the Lord's Prayer as a pattern for prayer. So let's uh, examine it line by line. The Lord Jesus said there in verse 9, He said, you begin like this, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. So you begin, first of all, by acknowledging the relationship that we share with our Heavenly Father. He says, God is our Heavenly Father. So you begin by acknowledging the relationship you have with God, that He is your Father, you are His son or daughter, that you've been washed, you've been sanctified, you've been brought into His kingdom, you are in covenant relationship with God, and you begin by that recognizing our Father who is in heaven. And our focus, our attention now is turned towards Him, the one who is in heaven, who is above everything else, who is a Lord, a creator, sovereign. And it begins with our, on the basis of our time of prayer, is our relationship with Him, our Father in heaven. And right after that, He says, You hallow his name, hallowed be your name, which is you are worshiping him, you are honoring him, you are just acknowledging how holy he is, how great he is, hallowed be your name. So you begin to lift up words of praise, thanksgiving, uh, just adoration, uh, just looking to him 
uh, that as your father and honoring his name, praising his name, adoring his name. So that's a pattern. So we spend some time doing that, recognizing our relationship with him and adoring him or worshiping him or just loving him. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And then he says, you go on to talk about inviting his kingdom. He says, your kingdom come. This is verse 10. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So now we are extending an invitation. You, in your personal time of prayer before God, you are extending an invitation to him and saying, Lord, I invite your rule. Your, when you talk about the kingdom of God, we're talking about his rule, his dominion, his lordship. So you say, your kingdom come. Lord, your rule, your dominion. I'm submitting myself to you and I'm inviting your lordship in my life. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, when we uh, do that, we first of all start by inviting his rule and his dominion in our own personal lives. Uh, before we go off praying you know, for his rule and dominion in other things or other areas or other spheres, begin by just inviting his rule, his dominion, his lordship in your own life. And you say, Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done in my personal life. That means I want your authority established. I want what is of your kingdom in uh, infiltrating and uh, uh, just pervading every part of my being. Your kingdom come, your rule, your dominion be established. And your will, that means God, what you desire, what you have purposed, be established in my life. So you submit your spiritual life, your walk with God, and uh, every part of your life, you bring it before God. So similarly, as you're praying, then you can extend that to your spouse and say, Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done uh, in the life of my spouse. If you have children, you extend that to your children. Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done uh, uh, in the lives of my children. Your kingdom come, your will be done in my home and my family. Uh, you extend his rule and his domain. Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done, Lord, over my finances, over my material things, things that I possess. God, I'm bringing all of that under your lordship. You extend it to your work life, in the place where you go to work. Lord, your kingdom come, Lord. Your will be done in my workplace and in my work life, in my professional life, in my dreams, my hopes, my aspirations. Uh, if you're in, the, in areas of your ministry where you're serving God, you say, Lord, all of this, I want it to be submitted to you. I want it to be aligned to your will. I want it to come under your lordship. Your kingdom come, Lord. Your will be done. Then you extend that to your local church, to your city and your nation. So starting with your own personal life and on to the fathers of each that you can, uh, you pray, Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done, and your will be established in all, my, all of these areas of my life. And extended, extend that prayer to your local church, extend that prayer for your city and for your nation. So this aspect of prayer uh, is when we invite his lordship. We invite uh, the work of his kingdom, the power and the authority of his kingdom to fill our lives and spheres that concern us. The next thing he says in verse 11 is, okay, once you've done that, once you've prayed, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Then he says, you pray, give us this day our daily bread. So now that's time for us to take up our personal needs to God. Areas where we want God to bring provision into our lives. So our daily bread doesn't just have to do with our physical food that we eat, but it really refers to all our needs, things that we need in life uh, to live a life of godliness before God. So it, it could be financial needs. It could be uh, needs for a, a job or things in your work life or things for your children or your family. Whatever it is, give us this day our daily bread. So you begin to take up your specific needs before God. Now, remember when we are uh, mentioning our needs before God, it's not just saying, God, you know, I need this, I need this, I need this, I need this, I need this. Uh, obviously, uh, our Heavenly Father knows that we have need of all these things even before we ask Him. But how do we pray for our specific needs? We pray with the prayer of faith. We 
take time to release believing prayer. We take time to exercise our faith uh, for those needs. You know, so it's not just a matter of saying, God, you know I need this and you know I need that. Of course, he already knows that you have need of that. And it's not just that we make mention of those needs. Uh, Rather, it's an opportunity. It's actually necessary for us to release our faith in God, to see God's provision come in to meet those needs. So when he tells us, pray, give us this day our daily bread, He's not just saying that we should make mention of all our needs, but he's telling us that's a time when we go before God, believing God for for his provision for our daily needs. As we've spoken in one of our earlier telecasts on praying, believing prayer, how to pray the prayer of asking and receiving or the prayer of faith. This is the time you pray the prayer of faith for specific needs for your own life uh, and for the needs of uh, people known to you, uh, their needs that you want to bring before God and extend your faith uh, along with theirs uh, to meet those specific needs. And then he tells us in the next verse, in verse 12 of Matthew 6, he says, once you've done that, you move on to pray like this, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. So now is a time engaging with God are in the realm of forgiveness. But there is a correlation between us receiving forgiveness and us releasing forgiveness. So the Lord says, you take time to deal with this whole issue of forgiveness. It, it has to do a lot of, uh, with, with a lot of our emotional side of things. That means now I say, God, I need forgiveness. That means I recognize things that I have done wrong. But at the same time, I also need to release forgiveness to people who have wronged me. So here's something important to do, just to take some time to clear our heart before God first. Saying, God, I know so-and-so said something like this that really hurt me, God, and I'm still feeling the pain. God, I release that forgiveness. I release forgiveness to that person. God, so-and-so said they would do this for me, and they failed to do that, or they backed off. They, uh, you know, they just uh, left me like that in the last minute. God, I release forgiveness. I will not hold it against them. So whatever it may be that wrong that people have done to you, first release forgiveness to them. Of course, it's through the power of the Holy Spirit and it's by the love that God has put in our hearts that we're able to do this. So you first check your heart before God to release forgiveness to people, to just release the love of God flowing out of your heart towards them, to bless them, to pray for them, to pray the blessing of God upon their life. Uh, to pray the prosperity of God upon their life. So you forgive them and pray blessing on, over them. So once you've done that, then you just open up your heart to God and say, God, are there areas in my life that I need forgiveness for? God, I may have done some things wrong. I may have said some things wrong. I may have failed to do the things that I should have done. So what it is, you let God search your heart. You say, God, search my heart. Know my thoughts. Try the intents and the purposes of my heart. And God, forgive me in the areas where I've I've done wrong. And sometimes you may even want to pray like how the psalmist prayed, Lord, forgive me uh, from presumptuous sins and cleanse me from secret faults. Sometimes we don't even know uh, uh, things that we've done wrong or things that we are actually, you know, in in the wrong. Uh, And so he he just prayed, God, cleanse me from my secret faults, things that I'm not aware of. And so we open up our heart before God, receive his forgiveness. And then we do this with confidence. You know, it's not like I need to shed so many tears and then based upon how much I cry, God is going to forgive me. God doesn't forgive us because of the tears we cry. He forgives us because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. You know that scripture in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 12, where John says, My beloved children, your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. So our sins are forgiven because of the name of Jesus in which we receive forgiveness for our sins because it represents the one who paid for all of our sins. And this is when we appropriate the cleansing power of Jesus' blood. Uh, as John wrote in First John chapter 1 and verse 7, he said, you know, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. So that blood cleanses us. So you take time to just engage with God in this realm of forgiveness, receiving wholeness and healing. You know, and as we release forgiveness to people, And as we release forgiveness for ourselves, it brings healing in our lives. 
Our emotions are touched. Our emotions are set free. Uh, there is joy. There is peace. Uh, there is a total sense of freedom uh, that comes into us as we engage in the releasing and in the receiving of forgiveness. So this is important for us to do uh, regularly as a pattern of daily prayer, uh, as a pattern for personal prayer, uh, to engage with God uh, in the realm of forgiveness. Then, in the next verse, in verse 13, he says, and do not, and pray this, do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So now, here's another aspect the Lord Jesus is telling us to deal with in prayer. The issue of temptation and the schemes of the tempter. So in prayer, he's saying, I want you to take care of that area. Temptation and the tempter. So he says, when we pray to God, when we pray to the Father, you pray that he will keep you from temptation. Do not lead us into temptation. Now, obviously, it is not God who leads us into temptation. So we're not in any way trying to imply, God, don't take me down the path of temptation. That's not it. The point is that we are asking God to keep us from going down those paths that would expose us to temptation. It could be choices. It could be the influence of companions. It could be certain circumstances and situations uh, that begin to pull on us in areas where we are vulnerable. So we are preemptively praying and saying, Father, you keep me from those situations, keep me from those circumstances, keep me from going down those paths, Lord, lead me not into temptation or keep me away from those situations and those paths that would make me vulnerable to temptation or expose me to temptation. Obviously, we understand temptation are inducements to sin, whether they, um, they come through a pull on our feelings or whether they come through the pressure of circumstances and situations, uh, causing us to do wrong, causing us to weaken in our faith. So he says, pray that way, preemptively pray. Uh, lead us not into temptation. Now, there's the other thing that, another aspect to this, that is you may be aware of areas in which you are being tempted. You're facing some battles. You're facing some intense attacks of the enemy. As Paul writes in Ephesians 6, it's the evil day. It's a, 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 an, a, a time and a, and a season in your life where the enemy has come out against you in a very uh, enhanced way, in a very uh, purposeful way, trying to put you down in certain areas. And so because you're aware of that, you're preemptively praying, Lord, lead me not into temptation. God, protect me. God, strengthen me to overcome. And so you begin to pray over those areas. Lord, I know the enemy is attacking me in this area. Help me to overcome that. Lord, I know the enemy is coming against this me in this area. Or I know the enemy would be coming against me in that area. So you preemptively pray and ask God to help you overcome those temptations. And then, connected to that, in verse 13, he says, and deliver us from the evil one. But deliver us from the evil one. So now... We are praying against the schemes, the direct attacks of the enemy. So now in your time of prayer, you, look, you, 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 you consider areas of your life where you think the enemy could be attacking. And we know the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So are there any such activity of the enemy in your life where he's trying to steal from you, where he's trying to kill, where he's trying to destroy? You look at it. You survey what's going on in your own life, whether it's your personal life, your health, your mind, your emotions, your finances, uh, your desires, um, what's happening in the life of your family members, your spouse, your children. Are there areas where the enemy, the enemy is trying to attack or would attack? Then you begin to pray over those areas. You begin to speak the word of God. You use the weapons of your warfare to deal with that area. Because Jesus said, you pray during your time with the Father. You deal with this. Deliver us from the evil one. And you take time to resist the enemy. So the Bible tells us, you know, that the, in 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9, it says that the devil is like a roaring lion uh, who goes about looking who, for whom he may devour. But we must resist steadfast in faith. We must be sober. We must be vigilant. And we must resist him steadfast in faith. So that's what you're doing now in this time of prayer, uh, in, your, in your personal time. You are being sober. You are being vigilant and you are resisting, being strong in your faith. Anything the enemy might try to do against you, the evil one would try to do against you. 
So you, you scan, you survey your life and begin to put up those defenses. You resist the enemy. You rebuke uh, evil spirits. You rebuke what the enemy is trying to do against you. Using your weapons of warfare, you break those things down. Break the power of those attacks against your life. And then, how do you conclude your time? He says that in verse 13, uh, when you pray, uh, as you come to the end of your prayer, he says, do this. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. So you're closing off your time in prayer by acknowledging the greatness of God. Lord, yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. That means forever and ever, always, this will never change. God, the kingdom is yours. You are king, you are Lord, you are sovereign. The kingdom belongs to you. Yours is the kingdom, the power, all dominion, all authority, belongs to God. And all the glory, all the honor, all the praise belongs to God. So you just give Him thanks. You give Him praise. Uh, You acknowledge His Lordship and you acknowledge that He alone is worthy of all of this. And that's how we close our time in prayer. So uh, using the Lord's Prayer, we have a very nice pattern of what we should pray and how do we go about spending our time with God in prayer. A very simple and a yet a very complete pattern for us to follow, which the Lord Jesus himself gave to us. He said, after this manner, I want you to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We trust today's message has inspired your heart and uh, provided you insights to enrich your personal life of prayer and journey into higher levels in prayer. We encourage you to make use of these things. We can apply them in your everyday life. And also remember to tell other, others, your friends, to tune in, watch this telecast. And don't forget to visit our church website that has numerous resources. You can download all our free publications, our sermons, or watch our, our TV programs online on our church website. So we encourage you to make use of that. Let's pray together before we close. Father, we thank you for this time in your word. And Lord, we ask you for the grace to be released upon our lives to enrich, O God, our prayer lives, to give us strength to pray and to pray as we ought, to pray more and to see tremendous results through praying. Give us the grace to do this, Father, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being on the telecast with us today. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way.